What do Head Hurlers, Klibinarii, and White Shield Pikemen all have in common? They're all units that you can use in Sebedee's Unit Roster Overhaul. A gargantuan unit pack for Total War Rome 2 that adds a whopping 420 brand new units to the game. It also happens to be my favorite unit mod for Rome 2. Hello and welcome back to the channel for another episode of Total War Rome 2 Mods Weekly, the series where I showcase some of the most interesting mods available for Rome 2, both new and old. One of Rome 2's biggest strengths is its setting, classical antiquity. The setting has so many possibilities for variety in both faction and unit design. Vanilla Rome 2 does a decent job at exploiting this variety, and is probably a major factor in the game's enduring popularity. That said, modders, as always, take a setting's unrealized potential and run with it. And that's exactly what Sebedee did with this mod. The attention to detail and overall quality throughout is simply incredible. The added units not only match Vanillas in terms of visual fidelity and gameplay design, but in many cases, they far surpass them. In this video, I'm going to do a deep dive into Sebedee's unit roster overhaul and show you why this game changer of a mod is definitely worth your time. He also made a unit roster overhaul for Total War Attila as well, so leave a comment down below if you want me to cover that mod too. And if all this sounds good to you, then a like on the video would really help the channel out, and let's go. Let's begin with Rome. Rome in Vanilla has, as you might expect from a game called Total War Rome 2, the most fleshed out roster. A rock solid buzzsaw like heavy infantry core with decent cavalry and javelin based missile units to support it. Sebedee's unit roster overhaul tackles the Roman faction just like he tackles most factions in the game, adding sensible units to expand player choice while not diluting the identity of the faction in the process. Rome remains a heavy infantry dominated faction. Your early game will still contain the holy trinity of Hastati, Principes, and Triarii. However, you can now supplement these with armed slaves known as Valones, which are significantly weaker than Hastati, but are also significantly cheaper. Building the auxiliary barracks now grants access to the bow-armed Sagittarii, as well as the javelin-armed Equites Solares. These two units in particular open up the tactical options for Rome in the early stages of the game. The Children of Mars also get access to some specialty infantry later in the game in the form of the Cohors Speculatorum and the Cohors Tumultaria. The flashiest, most visually impressive units the Romans get, however, are late game cavalry. Germanic bodyguards represent the Roman Empire's usage of Foederati, or Germanic auxiliaries, and are armed accordingly with elongated Spatha longswords and Lorica Segmentata. They look brilliant, but by far the best looking addition to the Roman roster is the legendary Clibinarii, who are armored head to toe. They're armed with deadly lances for the charge and long swords for close encounters once melee is joined. I absolutely love the look of these guys, and using their terrifying charges to smash enemies during endgame conquests feels amazing and of course immersive. Rome's seafaring nemesis Carthage meanwhile gets a unique approach to its military in this mod getting access to a completely unique mercenary building chain. This makes sense from a historical standpoint, since Carthage traditionally relied on allies and mercenaries instead of native troops. It also makes Carthage stand out from a gameplay perspective, being the only faction that can directly recruit mercenary units from buildings. That's something I've never seen in a mod before. Some of these include the versatile Sardinian Bowmen and more Skirmishers, both of which are almost as deadly in melee as they are at range. They also have a new powerful General's Bodyguard unit in the form of Scutari Bodyguard, who carry iron darts in addition to their deadly Falcata swords. Sacred Band now have a mounted variant as well, which in addition to providing a solid melee cavalry option to the Carthaginians, also doubles as a reference to the Rome 1 unit of the same name. They also get copycat legionaries in the form of late Libyan infantry, who can form shield wall and testudo. Carthage isn't the only faction to receive copycat legionaries either. Imitation legionaries make appearances in several faction rosters in this mod. Some ripped straight out of history, like the Gabiniani for Egypt, the Seleucid legionaries, and the imitation legionaries of Mithridates Pontus. Others, like the Arverni's Opidum Warriors and the aforementioned late Libyan Infantry, are historically inspired what-if units. Even the vanilla Galatian Legionaries receive a reskin more befitting of the name Legionary. 
I don't know about you, but I've always thought that the idea of imitation legions was so freaking cool, so I absolutely love the attention that they get in this mod. Time to put together a legion of my own as Pontus and make Uncle Mithridates proud. Speaking of Pontus, who you definitely don't want to play as, they've received a slew of new pikemen variants, some hardy spear units like the badass looking Meloforoi spears, and an expansion of their missile roster in the form of some nicely armored Pontic archers. They also get a heavily armored version of the venerable Cappadocian cavalry. Moving over to the barbarian side of things, the Swebi and the Iceni both get some absolutely epic units, which really helps set them apart from the other barbarian factions like the more vanilla Arverni and the slightly spicier Nervi. The Iceni in particular really needed these because in vanilla they're basically a strictly worse version of their Gallic cousins with some chariots. <laughs> Not so in Sebedee's unit roster overhaul. Semi-legendary units like the Saluri Spears and the Fianna offer some powerful spear options, both of which can use the Headhunt ability, which we all know is OP as hell. They also have Britain Champions, which carry two-handed swords, the only unit in the entire game to do so. They come with their own flavor of Berserkers, Woad Raiders, Druids, and yes, Head Hurlers. The Swebi, meanwhile, also get some amazing unique units, like Germanic pikemen who look like they're straight out of Rome 1, wolf dancers who both inspire nearby units and terrify the enemies, and chainmail wearing Tauriski axemen who can cleave their way through the enemies of Germania. Much like in Vanilla, however, their roster still relies on stealth more so than other factions, and Sebedi added units to support this. The Massilians are Hellenic, not Barbarian, but their proximity to the Gauls is represented in this mod by immersive little details like their units having Celtic influences in their design. Some of the biggest beneficiaries of this mod by far are the Balkan factions, whom I castigated in my DLC tier list video for having anemic rosters, especially the RDA. Not anymore though. Just look at the RDA's roster in this mod. It's enough to make a grown man cry. They even have their own archer unit now. The Adrizians, meanwhile, are no longer a one-trick pony rush faction. They can actually field some decent hoplite units which coincide with their proximity to the Greeks. They also have an absolutely stacked roster of Peltist units, which, I mean folks, you just love to see it. One of the best changes the Balkans received, though, is the addition of a beautifully made, vicious-looking Sika sword model. The Thracians were famous for these swords, yet they're inexplicably missing from Vanilla. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say that the quality of these units not only matches, but surpasses vanilla. The Hellenic successor kingdoms were already well endowed in the base game in terms of unit selection, but they've also received some new units to play with here. And by some, I mean a lot. I could dedicate an entire video just to these factions alone. Judean Thoreo Spears, Elite Native Egyptian Pikemen, Eastern Axemen, Seleucid Legionaries, Native Egyptian Archers, and much, much more guys. If you're a true son of Zeus or Amun-Ra, then Sebedee has you covered, rest assured. The nomadic factions received some infantry units, rounding out their rosters and making them handle more like the steppe nomads from Total War Attila, aka making them fun. The units aren't spectacular or anything, but they exist. They do their jobs, and they look badass doing it. For me personally, this handful of new units makes the steppe nomads so much more fun to play. They go a long way, guys. And that's the thing about this mod, the added units make sense, they're tasteful, they're quality, and they don't bloat the rosters. Take the Sparabara infantry for the Parthians. It's not just a mid-tier spearman unit, it's also an archer unit as well. An archer unit with shields to defend against other archers, and spears to defend against cavalry. It's a completely new and unique unit type that has no analog in vanilla. A jack-of-all-trades, Swiss army knife, much like the real Sparabara units in the old Persian Empire. They're immersive, they're fun to use, and they add more variety and player choice to the Parthian roster. The Parthian Cataphracts received a resplendent white and royal purple reskin that looks, I mean, just absolutely chef's kiss, guys. It's, it's probably the coolest looking unit I've ever seen in a historical Total War. It makes me want to recreate the Parthian Empire and spread sanitation, Zoroastrianism, and an extremely efficient mail delivery system across the ancient world. It's that good. Parthian Swordsmen also received a reskin as well, which gives them a more professional, uniformed look. It looks pretty cool. 
Overall, Sebedee's unit roster overhaul does pretty much everything you could want from a unit mod and more. No stone is left unturned. Every single playable faction, aside from the Desert Kingdoms, received new, high-quality units. The new units open up different playstyles for factions that wouldn't otherwise have them. The balancing feels right, the identity of the factions is maintained, and underutilized vanilla mechanics like the unit upgrade system and the auxiliary system are put to use. I can't speak highly enough about this mod, and you definitely owe it to yourself to try it out. The link is in the description box down below. I want to dedicate this video to Sebedi himself, because had it not been for his tutorials and his amazing mods, I might not have ever made my own unit roster overhauls for Wrath of Sparta and Rise of the Republic. So if by some chance he's watching this, thank you man. And thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like or even subscribing to the channel for more Total War content just like this. Remember to leave a comment if you want to see the Attila version covered here on the channel. Take care everyone, and I hope to see you in the next one.